We're going to take an even deeper look at sharpening techniques, in particular aiming to come to fully understand the Clarity, Unsharp Mask, and High Pass filter tools with the goal of applying each selectively to an image to bring the very most detail possible in the form of sharpness out of it. This video is building on information that we covered in the previous video on the Frequency Separation tool. It's linked above and to the right, and you may want to go back and take a look at it before going forward. Because today, we're going to be getting into some pretty deep and advanced concepts. The image that you are presently seeing in front of you is an image, of course, of the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula on attack in the Lump Star and some nebulosity surrounding it. I shot this image late in summer last year in 2023, and it represents about two hours of integration with only a UV IR filter in front of my telescope in my border 1 to 2 region where I operate my observatory. The image that you are presently looking at was processed in Pixin sites using my usual method of deconvolving the stars with Blur Exterminator, then running Noise Exterminator and extracting them with Star Exterminator, then undoing everything, extracting the non-deconvolved stars and tossing that plate, and then running a histogram stretch and a Kerr's transformation on the image structure then applying Noise Exterminator, and finally using Blur Exterminator as a sharpening tool to apply its AI to enhance the structure. This image was then exported to Affinity Photo, where it was divided up into three sections, the Flame Nebula, the Horse Head, and the Lump Star, and the curves of each section were developed separately, and an Unsharp Mask run separately to try to bring the most out of the image. But today, we're going to take that sharpening further. And we're going to do this entirely with an Affinity Photo, where we are going to combine the power of the Unsharp Mask, the Clarity Tool, and the High Pass Filter. Now, in a way, each of these tools do the same thing, so the secret here is to use each tool a bit differently. And to do that, we need to understand what the Clarity, Unsharp Mask, and High Pass Filter tools do. Let's look first at the Unsharp Mask. It has three sliders that perform its essential operations. The Radius Slider, defines in pixels how large an area of the image is affected, and the factor is a lot like a contrast slider. It defines the difference in brightness between pixels within its radius. And the threshold slider defines a minimum radius that will be affected. Anything smaller than the minimum threshold will not be affected. Typically, when I am using the Unsharp mask, I don't ever touch the threshold. I define the radius size and then the factor or the amount of contrast that I want between the pixels within that radius. Now, let's take a moment and talk about the Clarity Tool. The Clarity Tool is a lot like a contrast tool, but you could think of a contrast tool as like a sledgehammer, and the Clarity Tool is like a refined carving knife. It applies a focused contrast to the medium brightness within an image, giving an overall sense of increase in the fineness of an image's texture. Finally, let's look at the High Pass Filter. It has a radius slider, and it works just like the radius slider on the Unsharp Mask. In pixel size, it defines the size of the areas that it will affect. You can choose to check the monochrome box to be sure to limit its effects to monochrome or luminance-only information. You can use the opacity slider to soften or increase the degree of its effect. And you can use the blend mode to control the strategy by which a high-pass filter will apply its transformations to a layer. Typically, the soft light blend mode is used here as it applies the gentlest version of the high-pass filter's transformation to a layer. So, fundamentally, all of these tools affect contrast, but each filter, mask, or tool applies a different strategy to the way contrast is affected, creating an overall sense of sharpness within an image. By strategically applying each tool differently to an image, you can affect contrast or sharpness in different ways around different parts of an image, and by getting them to work in synchrony, you can create an overall improved sharpening effect around an image. So what we're going to do today is first separate this image into its low frequency and high frequency information using the frequency separation tool. That way, we can be sure only to affect the high frequency information where all the sharpness detail is. By operating only on the high frequency information, we'll minimize the risk of sharpening tools introducing artifacts or creating grittiness within the image. We'll also be able to make the low frequency information where we find color and luminance values invisible from time to time so that we can more closely inspect the results of each tool on the high frequency information. That's an awful lot, and this is one of those topics which, like learning to play a musical instrument, I think is best learned by observation and practice. So let's go ahead and jump in. I've imported this image into Affinity Photo, and then I'm going to duplicate the layer because we don't ever touch the proof. It's just there for possible future editing purposes or in case I do something irreparable and need to back up to the beginning. 
The proof layer is made invisible and it's locked so we can't accidentally change it. And now, with the operations layer also named background selected, I'm going to go up to the filters menu up top and select the frequency separation here. Just for illustration purposes, I'll draw the view screen all the way across to the right. In terms of the application of the feature, it doesn't make any difference whether or not you do this. And on the frequency separation tools radius slider, I'll draw the slider all the way to the right, telling the tool to remove all the high frequency information, which is the detail information from the low frequency information, which is the color and luminosity. Doing this allows us to work only on the high frequency information, reducing the risk of artifacts. Finally, I'll just select Apply, and the Frequency Separation tool will go to work. The background layer will disappear to be replaced by a high frequency and low frequency layer. The high frequency layer contains all of our sharpness and detail information, and the low frequency layer contains the information regarding luminosity and color. I'll turn off the low frequency layer, and you can see all the detail information only in the high frequency layer, and then I'll turn off the high frequency layer, and you'll see only the low frequency information. What makes frequency separation so useful is that by separating the high and low frequency information, we can apply sharpening tools only to the high frequency information, minimizing the risk of sharpening techniques creating artifacts and grittiness. We could also turn off the low frequency information so we can see exactly what's happening with the high frequency information. So, operating on the high frequency layer only, I've opened up an unsharp mask, and I'm going to otherwise treat the unsharp mask exactly as I would if I had not separated the frequencies. That is to say, I'm going to increase the radius and the factor of the unsharp mask until I feel I have maximized the amount of sharpness I can get out of the unsharp mask without introducing grittiness into the image. That looks good. Now I'll just turn off the low frequency information and do a quick inspection around the Horsehead Nebula where there is a lot of detail and we can see what it looks like at this point. Now, still operating on the high frequency information, I'll open up a clarity tool. Clarity tools are very powerful and can easily be overused because they affect contrast but at the pixel versus pixel level. However, it can be used not only to bring out detail but delicately enhance some shadows that I want to come out within the image. The goal again is to push the clarity as far as possible without having the image degrade into grittiness. Again, I'll turn off the low frequency information and quickly inspect it. I like where the image is going. We already have more detail, but I think I can bring out still more. So I'm going to introduce a high pass filter into the image. High pass filters also work specifically on the high frequency information. But when using a high pass filter, be sure to change your blend mode to soft light. This makes it add the high pass data to the information that's already there. I'm going to turn off the clarity tool now and amp up the slider on the high pass filter and see just how much sharpness I can draw out of that tool when its effect is combined with the unsharp mask tool below. Now, I'll turn the clarity tool on and off a couple times and see if it seems to put too much contrast in combination with the high pass filter and the unsharp mask. No, overall, it's very much the effect that we're looking for. However, I think the nebulosity around the star upper left here is a little gritty with the clarity tool applied. So I'm going to erase the effect of the clarity tool right there over that one nebula structure. It's very easy. I'm just going to select the paintbrush tool Go over to the Layers panel on the right and look at the Brushes tab and just make sure that's selected for Mask. Then make sure the black color is selected. With the black color selected, I'll then select the Clarity layer. And now, using the paintbrush, I can selectively effect or mask out effects from the Clarity layer. I don't think it's really essential, but I'd like to have the image looking as good as possible. And that's about it. By using frequency separation, I was able to keep the operations strictly on the relevant data and more easily inspect them. And by judiciously combining clarity, unsharp, and high pass tools, I was able to further enhance the sharpening. Let's take a moment and compare and contrast the before and after. This is the image before. Overall, I'm quite happy with it. The sharpness and the colors are very good. But in a moment, we'll switch to the image after. Pay a special attention to the developments in the next few seconds of sharpness within the Flame Nebula. The Lump Star, on attack in IC-432, and especially the Horsehead Lower Right. Let's put the images side by side. We'll put the before image on the left, and the after image on the right. Now let's take a look at some specific structures within this image. Let's begin with the Flame Nebula. Now let's take a look at the Lump Star.
And finally, let's take a look at the horse head. In terms of sharpness, there is a clear winner. The image that underwent frequency separation and then had a mutually supportive blend of unsharp clarity and high-pass tools applied to it. And remember, blur exterminator-based sharpening was applied in pre-processing back in PixInsight. I hope that helps. Now get out there and shoot the sky.